Todd McShay's Big Board coming at you here on NFL Daily, and today's show was presented by our good friends Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com slash chat where you can save 20% off your uh, balls. They're going to thank you. Okay, Tom, so this is going to be fun. At number one, not that big of a surprise here. It's Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, Todd McShay's Big Board here. Lawrence at number one. You guys don't need me to tell you anything about Trevor Lawrence. You don't already know. We'll do that later on in the draft process. Let's now go to number two, wide receiver at LSU, Jamar Chase. I like him a lot. His production will dip, so you might see a slide, quote-unquote, for Jamar Chase, but he's a great receiver. He should be the first receiver taken. Don't overthink him. He's a great prospect. Penny Sewell, offensive tackle out of Oregon, number three. Don't want to give away a question later, but he is the answer to one of them for me, so stay tuned for that. Had he gone pro, which he couldn't, he wasn't draft eligible, but had he been eligible, he would have been the first offensive tackle taken, and it wouldn't have been all that close. He's that good. Let's not go to the second quarterback, Justin Fields out of Ohio State, and I see Fields, I see Trevor Lawrence. I can already see a little bit of a debate here. At some level, it's actually a bit unfair to these two players because they've been compared to each other back in high school, now through college, and now all the way through the NFL. These two are tied at the hip. They're, they're going to enter the draft at the same time. They're both going to have great years. They're both going to be great franchise quarterbacks. Hopefully, they're both more Peyton Manning, less Ryan Leaf in the end. <laughs> I think you can make arguments both way. I lean more towards Trevor Lawrence, but you do have to be aware he wasn't as good in 2019 as he was in 2018. That does bring about some potential red flags. So here at Chat Sports, we let y'all de decide these debates. So who's the better prospect? If you think it's Trevor Lawrence, I want you to like this video right now. Mm -hmm. If you think it's Justin Fields, I want you to scroll on down to the comments and comment JF. So, Trevor Lawrence, like the video. Justin Fields, comment JF. All right, Tom, another quarterback. A lot of quarterbacks here. We got Trey Lance from North Dakota State. Want to make this clear? Y'all, you Raiders fans, got mad at me when I mocked Trey Lance to you at like number 15 or 13 overall my way too early mock draft. Now you got McShay putting him number five overall. You guys still feel that way? He's actually pretty darn good. Now, I can almost guarantee you he will throw an interception this year. But he runs the football a lot. I think actually working in his favor a little bit is that Carson Wentz had success in the NFL coming out of North Dakota State. So yep. you, you worry maybe a little bit less, although it is still a concern, the level of competition. I want to see Trey Lance throw the football more. He hasn't been asked to do a, a wide variety of high-level NFL things, but when he has, he's been able to do it. I don't have him number five. I think that's a bit high right now, but I do appreciate the love being shown towards Trey Lance right now. I think that's a good sign for him and, of course, for North Dakota State. At number six, Micah Parsons here is coming in. And are there any Penn State fans? We are. Type Penn State in the comments. I love me some Micah Parsons. This is a three-down linebacker who can blitz and cover. Do you want my player comp for him? Because I've had one locked and loaded for a while now. Shoot. Pre-injury, emphasis on the pre-injury part, Jalen Smith who before he almost ruined or almost had his NFL career ruined forever, Jalen Smith was going to be my best prospect that year. He was that good. Like, he was a baller. He could he could cover. He could put that in a lineup at, at nickel corner at times. Micah Pars Car Parsons can do those exact same things. Penn State was the original linebacker U. Been a little while since, since they had one to really fit that mold. Parsons bringing it back in style. Let's not go to number seven, Patrick Sertain, cornerback out of Alabama. Got some bloodlines you like. Alabama's done a good job of producing corners in recent years. I, I thought pretty clearly Sertain was better than Trevon Diggs, who went in round two, who had some round one buzz around him. I, I agree with McShay. As of right now, and of course, much can and will change, Sertain should be the number one corner in the class. Texas is back with Samuel Cosme, offensive tackle at number eight. Yeah, he, I am a little surprised he cracked the top 10. If you watch some of our early 2020 mock drafts, I actually actually had Cosme in there as a draft-eligible redshirt senior. I think he made the, my, the right move going back to Texas. I like him more than Connor Williams, but I still see some, some play strength concerns as well. I don't have him 10, but I think he's worthy of being in this top 32 discussion. Hey, you, I'm talking to you. I want you to scroll on down. I'm going to make this the pinned comment on today's video. Let me know the top prospect for the 2021 NFL Draft. I'm going to go with Panay Sewell, by the way, the Oregon offensive lineman. He's my number one guy. Maybe not quite Quentin Nelson caliber, but he's up there. Let's now go to number nine, where it's Sean Wade, a cornerback out of Ohio State. They breed him. 
They do, and Wade, I, I thought he was better than Damon Arnett last year, and look where Arnett ended up going, thanks to the Raiders, I still say, reaching on him, but that's beside the point. Hate he played, he played a lot of almost safety nickel corner hybrid. I think he'll be an outside corner this year. He has the size for it. Let's see how he fares. Even if he struggles a little bit more, I'm still taking him as a relatively early nickel corner safety hybrid guy. Let's go to Jalen Waddle, wide receiver out of Alabama. Dude can fly. Now, his production isn't great because he was technically the number four receiver last year for Alabama. <laughs> There's obviously no two up. We'll see who actually starts at quarterback for him, Mac Jones or the young kid. I, I'm a big fan of Waddle. I think he's going to go early in round one. You might have four Alabama receivers taken the first round in two years. That's insane. That's pretty crazy. At number 11, Marvin Wilson. If you guys haven't already, go give Tom a follow on Twitter. You can see below it's at what going downy. I like Marvin Wilson. He could have turned pro last year, so maybe he's this year's Derek Brown. Could have gone pro a year earlier, comes back, works his way into that top 15 discussion. I want to see a little bit more pass rush, but I've seen enough flashes for a man his size that I think it'll end up working out for him in the NFL. Flashes, Justin Ross, Number 12 here on McShay's big board, wide receiver out of Clemson. He was better than T. Higgins back in 2018. Ross kind of regressed this past year. One potential big-time red flag here. There are some stinger shoulder issues. He's getting surgery in June. They're going to say no long-term concerns until I see him back out there. That's going to be a red flag that goes on his scouting report that I need to see him fully recover from and get back to that, frankly, elite 2018 freshman form. We're talking about Todd McShay's big board. Am I the only one to hear Todd McShay? Todd McShave? No? No one? Todd McShave uses the lawnmower 3.0. You know how I know that, Tom? Because it's called a big board. If he didn't use it, it would just be called Todd McShay's board. The lawnmower 3.0, it's going to give you that extra inch. It's going to help you look a little bit bigger. So guys out there, go to manscaped.com slash chat. You're going to get 20% off when you go to that link. It's in the comments. We'll put it in the description. Also, portion of the proceeds do go to ball cancer. The Lawnmower 3.0 is the best tool out there to help shave your manhood. And you don't have to just take our word for it. You can ask Mitch's girlfriend. You can ask my wife. You can ask Dylan's girlfriend. I, I, I can personally attest that she appreciates it. So go get it, <laughs> manscaped.com. 20% off the Lawnmower 3.0. We'll get that link in the comments and the description for you guys. Go Pokes. Gregory Russo, you're up. Would have been better if this was Tylen Wallace <laughs> or if this was uh, Chubb Hubbard, or Chubb Hubbard, who did not make the list on either of them, by the way. Uh, Russo had great production this past year at Miami. He is a very differently built edge rusher. He's 6'7", 253. He's super long. Some of his best reps actually came as an interior defensive lineman, lined up as a DT. I want to see just a little bit more burst for him. But look, if he puts up 15 sacks again, how are you going to doubt 15-plus sack production at, at Miami of Florida? Like, I, I, I can't do that, you know? Hey, I hear Same. you, my man. Let's go to Jevin Holland here, safety out of Oregon, number 14. He listed as a safety by McShay and by me as well. Kind of was more of a nickel corner this past year for Oregon. That was more of the role he played, and he was really good at it. Also offers return value. I, he knocked Grant Delpit coming out of, of this of last year, I should say, with where we were at. I don't know if he ends up going around one. The NFL value safety is kind of weird, but I like what I've seen so far. Let's keep the show rolling here with the tie. Devonta Smith, number 15. I see what you did there, Mitch. Again, we mentioned Jalen Waddle. Now we got Devonta Smith. Actually led Alabama in receiving yards and touchdowns this past year. Has pretty good hands on top of that. He's not quite the unreal athlete that Ruggs or Waddle is, but he's a damn good receiver in his own right. I agree with McShay, and Kuyper had the exact same at least order of these Bama receivers, by the way. I got Waddle over Devonta Smith, but I think you can make a strong argument for DS here, man. So if you want to make a strong argument for DS, type DS in the comments and then argue for which player you think is the better Bama wide receiver. My answer, I don't really think you can go wrong. I think Waddle is unbelievably can. athletic freak, but... I will say this. I think Smith might actually have a better NFL career because I think he's just a little bit more put together. All right, we'll keep it rolling here now. We're going to go to Creed Humphrey. Not a big fan of the band. Big fan of him, though. Yeah, he uh, McShay put Creed higher on his list than I thought he was going to. Nobody got it. That's okay here. Uh, no one laughed at my single joke there in the office. I, I was a little surprised at just how high Humphrey is on this list. But of the interior offensive linemen, I think Humphrey's worthy of that being in that discussion for number one guy. Oh, so actually has two players. We might discuss a little bit later on. I don't see 16th overall, but I do see potential first-round pick. 
So more subs equals, watch this math, more videos. The link is below, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. If you like the work Tom does, if you like the work I do, we pump out a whole bunch of videos here, not just news and rumors. We do Todd McShay's big board. Also, we've done Mel Kuyper's top 2021 20, quarterbacks. We do all sorts of videos here. So take the link that you're watching, send it to all your friends, because Tom and I would like to be able to do some more videos. Yes, we would. So we'll keep breaking down 2021 draft players and prospects if that's what you guys want and then we'll base it on the views that's how things work here all right we'll keep it moving here we got jeremiah owosu koromora koromoa close you almost got that's a tough one uh, uh, how about jok jok okay Joke. i'm okay with that maybe we call him joker because he's a linebacker that's kind of a position i was actually surprised to see mcshay put him on here there hasn't been really much hype he's kind of one of those linebacker safety hybrid prospects a bit undersized but he's fast he makes plays behind the line of scrimmage definitely a fun round one sleeper to watch out for let's go to elijah molden defensive back out of washington at number 18 kind of play a little bit everywhere i saw someone and i don't think this is fair yet but i did see someone that i follow on twitter comp him to the honey badger Ooh. 5'10", 191, could probably play some safety or corner for you. 13 passes broken up last year. Led the team in tackles to 79, four interceptions. That's some pretty good production. Let's not go to Rashad Bateman, wide receiver out of Minnesota. Tyler Johnson might be gone to the NFL and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but Minnesota brings back their number one receiver. Rashad Bateman is a baller, folks. And in what is once again appearing to be a very strong wide receiver class, Bayman's in contention, I think, behind Jamar Chase. Be that second guy taken. At number 20 on Todd McShay's big board, and remember, you can go to manscaped.com slash chat to save 20% off. It's Jalen Mayfield from Michigan. I am intrigued that not just McShay put Mayfield in his top 20, but that Mel Kuyper did as well. Now, I'll let you guys in on a little bit of a secret. Kuyper and McShay get a lot of their information from their NFL contacts and sources. That Mayfield made the top 20 in both of them tells me this. The NFL likes this kid, and they like him quite a bit. And that does bode well for him being a potential round one pick. Now, McShay says that Mayfield still needs some developing, has to work on his hand placement and some strength. That's not a huge surprise. There are, of course, going to be things you want these players to work on. Younger tackles, it often is. Hand placement to make sure you're in a position to, to, to handle those rushers and push them back or sh shove them away or whatever you're doing on a, on a particular play. And strength comes with age as well. The sacks and hit numbers, they're pretty darn low. The hurries and, of course, then the total pressures have to drop. If you can cut those hurries in half at least, I think you might be getting some legitimate round one buzz for Mayfield come the 2021 NFL draft. And it's worth noting, of course, too, Mitch, that... He's the only returning starter because Michigan lost four linemen to the draft. Wow. So we want you, speaking of hurries, to hurry on. Type one for yes, type two for no. Will Jalen Mayfield go in round one? I think there's going to be some good discussion around the offensive line. There, there's always a lot of change here. And really, I think beyond Panay Sewell, the two, three, four, five, six, whatever that order ends up being, very much up for grabs. Mayfield, I think, could compete for that next offensive lineman taken. So Jalen Mayfield, where will you go? Let's now go to Dylan Moses at number 21. Yeah, Moses here checks in. A projected round one or first round pick entering that 2020 or 2019 season, excuse me, then missed the entire year with a knee injury. Mike Parsons is going to go before him, but Moses should also get some round one consideration, even at a position that the NFL doesn't value as highly as they once did. Checks off the boxes you want, provided he comes back healthy. I don't know if 21 is too high, but I think it's about right. Let's go to LSU at number 22, Tyler Shelvin. Big boy on the interior. I have to see more pass rush. He, he's a huge body, 6'3", 346. I got to see more pressure. If he brings you pressure, he'll go in round one. If he doesn't, that means he's not a Vita Vea, and he's more of a lucky foe two type and might slide further down into round three, even round three. Let's go to Chris Olave, wide receiver, Ohio State. 12 touchdowns last year on like 49 catches. Great athlete. Again, strong receiver class. I don't have much issue with Olave checking here inside the top 25. Back-to-back -back wide receiver Sage Surratt. Uh, looks the part and a great after the catch. Over 1,000 yards in just nine games. I like what he brings. His older brother, by the way, Chad Surratt, could be a first-round pick out of North Carolina, a linebacker. I have speed concerns here. 
Maybe not quite to the same extent as a Jawan Jennings. If he can test in the four fives, if he can test like Michael Pittman did, he's going to go on the same range. I just worry if we're getting a little bit too hyped around Surratt, although I will make note the offense was nowhere near as good without him, even with Jamie Newman back there. He's the engine of that team. So who's the number one sleeper draft prospect? Let us know in the comments section. Tom and I will go down and look, and if you want Tom to comment, yeah. he'll, uh, he'll also do that. So number one sleeper draft prospect in 2021. Let's all go to the first tight end coming off the board here, Pat Fryermuth from Penn State. He was technically draft eligible last year, the rare uh, sophomore who was eligible. He could have gone pro, and he would have been the first tight end taken, maybe even in round one. Got no problems here. Jay Tufele, maybe my favorite name. Good size, 6'3", 315, can stop the run. Got to see a little bit more pass rush, but the flashes are there. I'm expecting a breakout year for him this season. Headed back to Alabama where we got Najee Harris. He showed more in the passing game this past year. That matters, and I'll make note for Todd McShay, Harris was the only running back who cracked his top 32. He left off ETN, and he left off Hubbard. Producer Dylan, livid about the latter. I'm not that happy about leaving off ETN. I think ETN is, he was my number one back for you before he went back to school. He's still my number one back for this upcoming season. I absolutely love this graphic we have coming up. Pick a running back type one for Najee Harris, type two for Travis ETN, or type three for Chubba. I, I am going to type my two for Travis ETN. All right, I'm going to type my two as well. Producer Dylan, I know for a fact, is typing in his three. They're all great backs. I think they're all worthy of being inside that RB1, at least for now, discussion. Let's go to Kyle. From Florida, Kyle Pitts, since you tried to make a joke, and I don't really th think it landed all that well. <laughs> He's very much that move athletic Evan Ingram style tight end. We'll discuss another Florida tight end, the state of Florida tight end in a little bit, but I like Pitts being in the top 32. Let's go to Stanford now where we got Balson Adebo, cornerback. Uh, he had a lot of round one buzz last year, and then especially against UCF, Gabriel Davis got worked. He did not fare well, so I don't mind him being on here. He's got to bounce back in a big, big way. I'll volunteer to do the next one, Tom. Trey Smith. Yeah, it's an easy name for you there. The big red flag here is the uh, the blood clotting issues that Smith ran into in 2018. That has to be checked out. If it does, if NFL teams clear him and there will be a higher bar to clear for the NFL, then he could get back on the field at Tennessee. He should be a round one pick. He's played tackle. He's played guard. I think you could have a perennial pro bowler at guard if he stays healthy and if that blood clotting issue is cleared and good to go. We'll stay in the SEC, LeBron Ray. I actually think there's a different Bama defensive lineman worth discussing here in a little bit. There's going to be one. LeBron Ray is a good prospect. I would not have put him in my top 32. I think they're just some more deserving players, but he's good. Don't we'll wrap this up the top 32 with the Big Ten, Rondell Moore. Rondell Moore, baby. If he's healthy, he was banged up last year with a leg injury. Man, you don't find freshmen who walk onto the field at a Big Ten school and are immediately the best player on the field. That's what Rondell Moore did. I hope he stays healthy because I'm expecting big things from him. So that was Todd McShay's big board top 32 prospects. So let us know. Who is Todd hating on? Because there's obviously a lot of season. players. A lot, a lot of players that he left off the board. So who is Todd McShay hating on? Let us know in the comments section. Here are some notable prospects that he did leave out. Tom, talk to me about these guys. Yeah, uh, Hamsa Nazrul Dean, the FSU safety, good size. He's not the same caliber of prospect, but he's built like one of those bigger, lankier cities, so kind of in that Derwin James build. I think he's got some promise. Christian Barmore is the Bama defense lineman I'm super intrigued by. A lot of flashes down the stretch last year. Watch out for him. Walker Little was mocked as a first-round pick last year. I, I got some medical concerns on him. I think Todd does too. Brevin Jordan is part of a strong tight end class. Watch out for Carlos Basham Jr. out of Wake Forest. He could be that round one other edge in what's frankly not a great edge class. 